Jessica Dugas, you ready for another break breakthrough show here? <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> oh, it's a great day for a breakthrough here. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm glad we're able to reconnect. So we just connected on your show for um, a project that you're working on. And obviously, feel free to share as much of it as you want uh, throughout this conversation. But I wanted to connect with you around your experience of receiving one of the Moments Worth Remembering books, which your husband played a huge role in helping put all this together. It's funny. It, I'm sure we'll get into this, but a number of calls him and I had secretly, right? <laughs> like he's at work, he's stepping outside during his lunch break. He's Let calling me tell he's you. Like, hey man, <laughs> I, I got 10 to 15 minutes and I don't know if this is even a good time to reach you, but here's where we're at. Here are the people we're still waiting on. So it, it was such a beautiful journey to put this book together for you because you're someone who really values community. You're someone who really values people. You're someone who really values friendships. And even the whole episode that you and I had around making friends as adults, it's a different experience compared to the experience that we went through when we were kids, right? So doing this thing was really unique and special. And I'm so grateful he was able to give this to you on Christmas Eve. So talk Christmas about Christmas Day. Gift. Yep. Christmas, Christmas Day. Day. I sat on my couch and like, cried. <laughs> talk about a, a gift. Um, but I, you know, I, like I said, I have no uh, script for this. I just wanted to learn what was it like? What was it like to experience it? Uh, did you have any expectations of receiving ever something like this ever in your life? Have you received things like this from people? Uh, were you surprised by any of the people in it? Were you surprised by what people wrote? So any of those questions? Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's been quite the experience. And I think to be fair, I'm still experiencing it. Mm -hmm. Um, because as I shared with you, um, on the, on the project that I'm working on, um, the, the friendship project that I'm working on has been something that I have been thinking about doing for a couple of years and really other priorities came in front of it for quite some time. And, um, but the receiving this was kind of the receiving the moments worth remembering book was kind of a, the shove that I needed into, Hey, you've been bouncing around this a little too long. Let's actually commit and, and do this. Um, so I have to thank you uh, immensely for that. Um, Cause I don't think that was ever an intention of yours for it to be a little <laughs> business boost. <laughs> Um, but like you said, I did receive it on Christmas and it's funny cause you mentioned how many secret calls and whatnot. So my husband and I are, are very, we have a very close relationship. We, when he's off of work, we do spend a lot of time together, but we also, he also works a lot. And then while he's working, I have sort of this whole life doing what I do online, my shows and as you and I have discussed before, as speakers, we meet a lot of people. And I'm not sure that my husband, my husband, he might remember like certain names. He always remembers when I bring up your name or some of the other, you know, mutual people that you and I know. Um, but he, I couldn't expect him in a million years to remember the amount of names that I'm capable of remembering. Um, cause it's not his work. It's not his yeah. passion. It's not his job. And so I really realized though, like how, how separate, I guess our conversations have been around the importance of certain people in our, in our, our different lives, like in the lives that we're not together for. Um, and so it, it was funny leading up to <laughs> receiving this, um, that I'll like, you know, hand him his phone or something and I'll see a name flash up and I, and I'll joke around with him. Like, what are you doing talking to my other husband? Like, you know, like I would just <laughs> joke with him. <laughs> That. And he would be like, and he would, he would always brush me off and, and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're seeing like, 
I thought I was really losing my mind, Oleg. It's, for a while there, you guys made me feel like I was really losing it. But um, but yeah, and and then it was interesting because a couple weeks before I received my book, um, I saw a mutual friend of ours share a video on social media of she had received a book, and she said in the in the video, I remember her saying, "I'm still pro like it's been a couple weeks, and I'm and I needed time to process it." And I thought, you know, Judgy Jessica was like, what do you mean you need time to process it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I've been processing now for um, several weeks and I'm not done yet um, because it really does invoke a lot of different feelings. Um, and I can get more specific about those things as our conversation continues, but it, I, I cried hard in, in opening it. And I knew of, because we know each other and I know what you, the, these projects you've been doing. I had seen the cover. I knew what it was when I opened it. So there wasn't like, Oh, I wonder what's inside. I knew, <laughs> I knew what was coming. And I was like, go get me the tissues. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> and um so yeah, it's been really a roller coaster experience, but it was very emotional and I'm still processing. It's what I would say. Let me ask you this. In in reading the things that you read, do you did you feel it was aligned with who you know yourself as? Did you see different things about yourself that you might not have? through the perspective of other people? Um, I would say there was some, there were some moments, there were some phrases that felt really like aligned. And there were, there were other moments where I felt this is who I thought I was, but I wasn't sure other people saw it. Hmm. There were also moments, um, I'd like to speak about this if I can, because mm -hmm. there, we all express things in very different ways. Some of us are amazing speakers. Some of us are amazing writers. Some of us may feel, um, some of us may behave differently when the spotlight is on us, whether that spotlight is a physical light or when it's just our turn to write something. And there were even there were a few moments in the book where I thought to myself, why haven't they ever said that to me? Because maybe for years I had wondered how they felt. Um, there were a couple of moments that felt um, that were really hard. Um, about a month before I received the book, I lost a a very good friend of mine um, that was someone that I had been friends with for years, who, in you and I's discussion about friendships, um, sometimes one of the one of the best people that you need to become friends with is yourself, and knowing what you deserve and what you don't, how you will allow yourself to be treated and how you won't. And there was a situation where I had been treated repeatedly a certain way and I made the decision to say something this time. And I said, in short, I I cannot I cannot be spoken to in this way at any anymore. But I would like to talk about it. And the response to that was a complete disconnect, a complete cutoff, a complete deleting on every social media, um, just disconnecting, period, end of story. And one of the passages in the book 
was written by that person. So one of the things that I really, and everybody who knows me really well has heard me talk about this till I'm blue in the face is how nostalgic I am. I have a habit, um, maybe not even a habit, but I like to hold on to things and people. And I, cause it, because I, I don't think any of us ever go into relationships going, well, we'll see how long this one lasts <laughs> or yeah. we'll, you know, we'll give it a try and see, see how far this goes or where this friendship takes us. Um, and, but one day it's going to be over. I don't think any of us plan on ever a friendship ending, but one of the gifts that this book gave me was allowing myself to appreciate a moment as your one of the words in the title of the book and to tell myself that it's okay that that moment has passed and that the moment was good enough as it was mm. that it it was what it was and that it's okay for me to to let it go now and it's very like that's one of the passages in the book that i'm still processing because the break in the friendship was so unexpected and so difficult because that friendship saw me through a lot of really challenging times mm -hmm. um but seeing this Mm -hmm. What she wrote in the book was necessary for me to be able to process what had happened, which I had been sitting on for a month prior to mm -hmm. receiving the book. So in going back to the question you asked about alignment and do you see yourself in those things, I absolutely see myself in what she wrote. Um, and. I'm having to allow myself to know that what happened doesn't take away from who I am. It doesn't mean that I'm different than what's written in there, that it may have had nothing to do with me at all. And so I'm really processing each thing as a moment and that the space from which they wrote what they wrote is who that I'm who they interacted with at that moment, that that's who they got. And it could be vastly different from what, I, who I am in this moment or who I was 20, 30 years ago. Why do you think some people did not or have not chosen to express that the things that they did prior to this book? Um, it's kind of like I was sharing. I think it's not, it's not always um, a comfort thing. I think vulnerability can be difficult for some people. Um, I think maybe expressing yourself on the spot can be difficult for some people. Um, whereas if you say, hey, you've got two weeks to figure this out. Um, what you want to say that maybe they feel more confident in finding the words given time. Um, I don't think that it necessarily says anything bad about anybody by any means. Um, but it has also helped me to process and decide what types of relationships I want more of in my life. And I want more relationships that where we can talk, where we can sit and have these types of conversations and be vulnerable. It's, that's very important to me. I'm realizing through this. Mm -hmm. well, I'll say that in doing this with, um, Philip, uh, your husband putting this together, it, it was, uh, it was such a uh, beautiful journey in many ways. I think a trying to understand who are the people that we want to include and reach out to that are part of it, right? Because it, it's, uh, 
So my, my whole intention in creating these things is to be able to gather as many different people from different walks of life and different chapters of a person's life to try and express the type of impact that that individual has had in the other people's lives in different circumstances. So whether it was bypassing, whether it was a shoulder brush, whether it was knowing somebody for 10 to 20 years, yes, there are going to be different experiences shared within each one, but overarching qualities will probably be the same, right? Is this person that values people? Are they trustworthy? Are they this? Are they that? And in your case, in working with your husband, putting this together, I mean, it, it was, uh, it, it seemed effortless. As soon as we started to reach out to people, they're like, absolutely. Yes. When do you need this done? How, how much should I write? Or is this too long? Or is this not enough? Like it, it just, it seemed that way. And I think to some degree, it speaks volumes about who you are as a person. And whether or not you're able to see it yourself, that's kind of your journey to go on as a person. But from an outsider perspective, it was really fascinating to experience that because it was like, wow, that is incredible. Summer Watson is another person that comes to mind, right? Also someone who had received the book, also a huge believer in people. Same exact thing. I mean, instantly people are like, absolutely. I'll do it right now. So this whole concept of I don't have enough time to people saying, I'm going to make time for this. It revealed itself very quickly. And I, I think in your case, it's just another one of those things about community, which I was actually going to, I was curious to ask you, when did this become a thing in your own life? When did you really start to value community? And when did you start to value the importance of a community in your life? Um, I really think that for me, it, it has, it has been a lifelong, a lifelong pursuit to have as, as Anne of Green Gables puts it in the, in, in the novels, um, bosom friends and kindred spirits and um i've always been sort of i guess to some naive about friendships um i am i am the type of person to say you're my friend and you're my part of you're part of my community from the moment we meet and until something happens where a trust is broken or, or something along that lines. It's at that time that I create boundaries for myself or something like that. But I really, I really do like, I'll meet someone and, and immediately as we're talking on the phone, thanks for being a good friend. And like, I've known you for five minutes. <laughs> like, and it's really like, I say there's been people that have told me, well, you know, that's why you experience so much heartache because you allow yourself to just be out there like that but I can't imagine being any other way when I was growing up I really like I saw the importance of community when I was struggling at home um when I was dealing with I I was diagnosed um with depression very early on in in life so I was um in middle school when I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and um and it was groups and choir and band and these communities that I was a part of that truly saved my life during those times. True, Like I'm here today because of community, because of relationships, because um, of how important I feel connection is. As I've gotten older, I've really started to do more evaluation around that. I've really started to clean up my own side of relationships and friendships. Um, what kind of friend am I being? What kind of participant in community am I being? Um, because I think it was a little haphazard before. Um, you said something in in our recording for my pro my um project mm -hmm. about being sincerely accountable and sorry 
to anyone that may have met you during a time in your life that you're not where you're not the person you are today. And I feel so strongly connected to that. I feel yeah. so strongly because I, I a hundred percent haven't always been a good friend. I 100% haven't always been the, the, t the top tier person in a, in a project or a community. Um, but I, I'm a, I am such a different person now, such a different person where that is concerned. And so I, I would offer the same thought that I would, I am wholeheartedly apologetic and um, accountable for any way that I have ever behaved that might have made someone feel less than or uncomfortable or anything other than who I am today. And so I think I still have that sort of naiveness or, or childlike quality of we played in the same, same sandbox, so now we're friends, uh, <laughs> kind, of, kind of quality about myself. But I'm also very quick now, really within the last year and a half, two years, to say, okay, I've invited you into my sandbox 50 times, and I'm done inviting you to my sandbox now. And, and, and that's, that's it. Um, so being more mindful of what role I'm playing, but also how I'm spending my energy, who I'm spending my energy on, um, mm -hmm. and who I'm prioritizing. And I think to some degree, what I've learned is that there's really no reason to, for, I'll speak from my perspective, there's no reason for me to even take that personally, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm choosing that route or when someone else is choosing that route. Mm -hmm. And if anything, I think the actions can speak louder than the words sometimes when it comes to it and that's we all have the common theme amongst all of us on this planet is that we all have 24 hours that's it nobody has more than that in any given day everyone only has 24 hours now some people sleep less some people sleep more so there's you can go down those rabbit holes but 24 hours that's all we have and within 24 hours you can you choose how many relationships you want to foster to create to manage cultivate and i think just like other people choose that in their own lives i think it's only a fair choice to make within our own lives right. who are we willing to do that part of that i think also understanding and i'm just at the early to mid phases of understanding that and that's people do come into your life people can come into your life for a season, reason, and a lifetime, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. No reason to expect people to stay there for a lifetime. Maybe they were there for a reason. Maybe they were there to help you in whatever way, and that's it. And that's I think fine. on the same token, if I can, if I can add this yeah. to what you're saying, mm -hmm. I think when we experience loss of of a connection of any kind, whether it's a friendship, a relationship, a client, you know, whatever. There are many people that are quick to say that, to, that are mm -hmm. quick to say, well, reason, season, lifetime, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that the process of grief in losing friendship, especially of someone that's still on this planet, it wasn't like, you know, they, they died or, or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the situation, but they're still here very much present and, and on this earth. That process of grief that needs to happen when those relationships end is a very real experience. And yeah. like I mentioned before, we don't, I don't think any of us go in to like, when I met you, Oleg, I didn't, I didn't meet you and go, well, We'll see if this is going to be a reason, season, or a lifetime. <laughs> like, we don't plan. I, I think, and maybe I'm alone in this. I don't know. I can only speak from my experience. I hope in meeting in everyone, I think in the back of my head, I hope this is forever. Mm -hmm. I hope that I'm, you know, 90 years old 
and and you're what eight, 78 <laughs> i hope when i'm old and i can call you and be like you know i know we haven't done business together in a long time but i need to go down the rabbit hole on this conversation with somebody that understands you know like that's always my hope and so when that doesn't happen that way i think i i allow myself and i encourage other people who have ever come to me about this to give yourself that space to grieve because it's very real and and you can in the knowing, like you can give yourself the the little the pep talk of, you know, some things are just for a season. It's okay for you to know that and also be incredibly heartbroken and sad at the same time. Hmm. Like it's okay to know it's for a season, you know, kind of moving on. And it's okay for you to tear up when you talk about it. It's yeah. okay for that to happen. And I'm and I'm learning to give myself the space for that instead of trying to get over it you know, as, as I feel like so we so often feel we should. Do you think many people take the time to grieve actually the connections that transform, become something else or lose or even lose connections or do, or, or is the, te is the tendency to just keep moving forward, just move on? I think in general, the tendency is to just move forward, especially mm -hmm. if it's not, um, if it's not a like a spouse or um or if someone didn't die uh i think the ten like if they're still on this planet if this was a an acquaintance or maybe a friend that an on let's just an online friend you know we've never met them in person i think that the tendency is to just well move on but um i think it's probably very dependent on the type of relationship, how long the relationship was, and then even understanding that, you know, if you had a relationship, a friendship with someone and it ended that they may be processing it a complete, they may be able to move on and maybe you need to take that time to grieve. And that can be a challenging situation I found too, where it seems like, okay, someone's just like, dropped you and moved on but i'm over here crying like what's what's that about um but i think that can also be helpful in in assessing maybe what happened or or processing you know how you want to approach friendships in the future hmm. um how you want that to look you know going forward with your mm -hmm. other friends mm -hmm. And I think also to some degree, even as you're sharing that, the, the uh, just the reality of the matter is if it's an online friendship, someone that you've never met, it probably <laughs> is some degree it's easier, right? To be able to just keep moving forward. You're just, yes, you're connected, but you are not as closely connected because there's a difference in meeting someone in person and actually experiencing that energy compared to just over Zoom through kind of this version, right? And there have and, been there have been relationships. I would I would push back a little bit on that because oh, actually, yeah, yeah. Dorothy is there an have example. been I have a very good example. Uh our friend Dorothy Oje. Yeah. Um that's a good example. It's a good I've never example. met her either and I felt the same way. That's, that's um, very much, yeah, you're very much true in that. Yeah. And we spent. How long did you, spent, how long did you know her? Um, I really don't think all that long. Um, but we spent every, the calls? at the end, right? what did you say? Did you meet her through the Saturday calls? Um, yeah, I met her through the Saturday calls, but then, mm -hmm. um, then I started helping her uh, with her project, with the poem. And I spent every day, like, there, was, there wasn't a day that would go by for a good year about where we didn't at least text. Like, it was, and you have, like, the best intentions to see each other one day. And in fact, even um, another good friend of ours, Daria, 
who I was introduced to to through um one of the recordings we did with the poem and then daria came to be on my show daria was meeting some family in rhode island not long after we moved here to connecticut and um we didn't even know each other that well but just in that connection of knowing dorothy she was like let's meet up and so we met in in mystic and um and we took pictures for dorothy awesome and um Sometimes, sometimes the connection goes beyond physical. Hmm. And I would say, I would say she's the only one that I'm really missing Hmm. from this. Yeah, Dorothy was and is uh, surreal, Hmm. surreal individual. (laughs) All happened so quick, too. Yeah, I remember. So I was connected with her for a number of years. I was connected with her for a number of years. I was planning to go actually see her in Belgium when I was doing the year abroad, and then obviously she passed right right before that. But. She's just, uh, it's hard to even put it into words who she was as a person and what she brought to the table every time you connected with her. I've always felt safe. I've always felt safe around her. I've always felt that I was truly accepted as who I was. She had this thing about her where you could just tell, like, she truly didn't judge and when she did she would actively try to reframe from judging and that was a really special thing because not everyone you meet is able to do that that's more of a acquired skill i believe just my experience has taught me so yeah that that was uh she's she she's can't put into words she's she's something Incredible individual. Um, and, you know, I look at her life and I don't mean it in a way of uh, maybe it happened the way it was supposed to. I don't know. I don't know really any of that about life. I mean, you look at so many people who pass at different stages, ages of life, right? People who die right after being born, people who die in their 40s. 50s, 60s, 70s, pretty much every age group. And you you can't help but wonder, was there some sort of purpose? Was was there time complete, so to speak, for that chapter because they were meant to pass on this message to the people that were in their lives? I don't know. I, I, I have no way of answering that question. All I can say is that some people who choose to live a life like Dorothy, for example, and that's in service of others, do create ripple effects, for sure. And and people who actually embody those things, like she was, I mean, I, I don't remember the poem, you remember the poem probably better than I do, but I know a majority of it was about love, right? And she understood that she understood that at the end of the day similar understanding that i have is i think there are really just two two frequencies it's either fear or love and there's kind of like a variation of it in between of the two in between and she chose the other she always chose to operate from love can i read you the poem of course for love i shall stand for love even with a broken soul, even with a heavy heart. I shall stand for love, for the world is wounded. Not just my little piece of land, where I am mostly safe, where I am mostly well, but our world, everywhere, every day. I shall stand for love because we need more light, not more deaths, not more power, not more bombs. I shall stand for love so that our children are safe, so that our friends are sheltered, so that our borders are open. 
I shall stand for love, even with a broken soul, even with a heavy heart. Hmm. There is still a group of us that get together every single morning, seven days a week, 7 a.m. Really? Eastern time, crack of dawn, to read that. Um, Dorothy started that. We continued every day since she passed. And there are touch points like that poem. And now, like my Moments Worth Remembering book that will shape who I am as a person and determine my role within relationships and friendships and connection. And I thank you for being a part of that. Oh, thank you. It's wild to think of the impact we can all have on each other. You mean like the small gestures, right? Which really, I guess at the end of the day, it's all small steps, mm -hmm. small steps that lead to the bigger steps. But I, I just think about all the different people similar to your life who, dead or alive, who have impacted my life. And it's like, I really am not the version I would be without those people. And, and to some degree, it's also fascinating to look at the different people in your life and to understand that you're never just one of those people. Like you're an element of them. It's an element that you most likely chose, right? Like I have some people in my life. I, I don't know if you know um, Brian Kelly, really good uh, person. and. One of the things that I took away or I'm taking away from him, my interactions with him is his choice of words. One of the more intentionally spoken individuals I've met. Actually, you, you, when you converse with him, you could tell he's actively choosing the words that he's saying. And it's really fascinating because then it, it just – conversations are way more meaningful. They're deeper. and more expressive because you can actually articulate the thing you're trying to say without having to spit out 50 other words and hopefully land on the point you're trying to get to. And then you have people like Dorothy who accept you for who you really are. Uh, I've met some people who have these, the side of them that's like super uh, loving as a person. And it's like, wow. How did they get to that? How did they develop that? So, and then to some degree, you, like I mentioned to you on your show, you do, I believe you become the byproduct of all those things, all those things that you choose from other people. And then you just get curious about, well, how did you do it? How do you do it? There's a book called The Mosaic um, by Daniel yes, Bruce um, Levin. He's, I, I, to this day. So I was introduced to him by Lachelle Atkins years and years ago. And to this day, I remember my interaction with him. In fact, I sent him a message a couple of weeks ago thanking <laughs> him for that interaction. Did you not? Mm -hmm. Years and years ago, I connected with him. And for 30 to 45 minutes, all he asked me, and I really mean this, all he asked me was, who are you? Nothing else. Yeah. He just kept asking, who are you? Who are you? And there was a certain point, I remember like 20 minutes in, I got frustrated. Like, what do you want from me? Like, right. I've described to you in every possible way who I am. All of these years later, I look back at that time, and what I'm choosing to take away from that was, it's not only what I was saying in the, as a response to who I was, but it was how I was reacting, what I was feeling. It's all of that. That's how powerful my time with him was. All he did was, who are you? For 45 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. Imagine. 
<laughs> you're sitting in a conversation with somebody and all they ask is, who are you? He you has say that impact. Well, who are you? <laughs> no, but yeah. who are you? Who are you? Yeah. And then you finish and then he asks again. I'm like, damn, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, this is who I am. But that's the impact. And I, and I see how powerful that really can be. Because if you have the awareness to look at that whole experience and not judge him as someone who was trying to personally attack you with the question of who are you, but really look at it through the lens of how did I really show up? How did I show up at 20 minutes when I got really frustrated with him for asking me the question for the 50th time and not having any new words? <laughs> in the English language to answer that question, that's also who I was. I think it speaks to what you're talking about, though, of, of you know, his book and, and being the mosaic. We are individually the mosaic of the people, of, of any being that has ever touched our lives, lives. And I've even talked about, like, even fictional characters and things like that become part of who we are. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how many times in the last couple hours we've spent together, I've mentioned a movie or a book or something like that. And that has impacted my life in a certain kind of way. And so I, I would, I would say going back to a question that you asked previously about, you know, how long has community been important to you or connections and things like that? And I said forever because I've always sort of felt that. I felt that you are me and I am you. And and not that we are each other in that we lose our uniqueness, but I think about I think about my grandparents, um, who are immensely uh, important in my life story. And I think if if Daniel were to be sitting here and asking me that question, part of me would want to say, well, I am my grandfather who when my grandmother would be angry with him and she would be standing there in the kitchen scrubbing the dishes because she did that, like she did a lot of cleaning when she was mad and she would be scrubbing the dishes and he would come in and he would start like singing in the kitchen if I were a rich man from Fiddler on the Roof. And having a whole performance in there that that's me that I do that, you know, and, um, and I have allowed my, I'm, I'm you because I allow myself to be more curious. I give myself more permission to be curious when that was kind of shut down for a long time, but then I met you and met my match. And so I'm you and, and so, and, and I think there's an aspect of us that sometimes afraid to be each other because we want to be unique. We want to be, but it's, it's, we're still unique because we're all our own mosaic of a person. Like no one's ever going to have the unique combination of Oleg, Scott Mason, my grandfather, Dorothy, my kids, my husband, no one's going to have that. And, and that's like, that's such a beautiful thing about, I think that's what keeps me passionate about relationships and making new relationships and new connections is like, who am I going to get now? Like, who is this person going to be? It's because it's exciting. It's exciting because no one can be each other. And that's a really, that's a really cool thing to experience. Hmm. Jessica, how do people connect with you? What do you have going on? What can you share about this new project that I was able to be a, a part of as well? So they can connect with me at jessicadugas.com and or the breakthrough show network.com. I have been at um, this hosting of shows and helping other people to host shows for several years now. And I had this idea in the back of my head for a while about doing a documentary of some kind. And, you know, you have a lot of who are you to do that <laughs> coming up in that in those thoughts. Um, and then I knew a couple years ago, I knew that I wanted it to be about friendship um, because I really felt like I've ridden the roller coaster of friendship throughout my life. There's a lot of doors opening and closing and and me wondering why and my attachments and all of those things. 
And then, like I said, when I received the book, it was like, okay, go. <laughs> and um, so I am producing uh, writing and um, editing and all of the things, a documentary called The Friendship Paradox that is premiering on July 30th. Of, of 2024, which is International Friendship Day. And I truly hope that it opens up a much needed dialogue about friendship as adults and relationship as adults and how we all process those things. Um, and I think it's it's been a long, I, I'm not sure anybody's ever done anything like this, but I, I think it's necessary. So I'm excited to you the one that was apparently called to do it. <laughs> I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you.